Okay, we're not really doing a live video today, but I figured I might as well just do my wrap-up video, and who knows, maybe it'll turn into something, I doubt it, because we are down 15 points with 4 minutes to go, but, uh, you know, you never know. Um, so, I'm going to pretend the game is officially over. Uh, we did not clinch the NFC North today. Uh, we... <laughs> we gave it to him. I mean, especially in the first half. Um, so many just self-inflicted mistakes. Oh, Jefferson is unbelievable. Kirk. Oh, well. Oh, no, he's not nice. God, Kirk and JJ, those two have had just monster games today. Oh, and, the and, then, yeah, the just went down. and who's Hold hurt? Oh, God, who's, who's hurt now? Brandle's hurt. Tackle. Well, I think we're going to probably have Darisaw back next week. Um, the officials have gotten together. Jefferson with a 38-yard catch and run, but... Well, they the haven't announced the flag back. yet, but it's probably on us. That's kind of, It's been that kind of day. Um, it's hard to have... All right, so we get to look that. That counts. Nothing else. Uh, we're helping JJ's statistics out a little bit here. Nice game. Um, yeah, just too many mistakes, especially in the first half. Uh, we we went to the breakdown 14-7. There was no reason it should have been 14-7. We should we should have been leading. Um, you know, we have a we have a dumb penalty. You know, it was just as as everything that happens, a dumb penalty, a dumb turnover, bad play calling. Um, I'm still 100% team KOC. He did not have a good game today at all. This was this was probably his worst game um, from a from a decision making standpoint, a play calling standpoint. Um, yeah, they blew the, they blew that play dead on JJ. He might have actually gone for a touchdown. Here's Thielen on the wide receiver screen, <laughs> and he stays on his feet with help from the right guard Ed Ingram. So that was funny. That was that was, that was the funniest play Ed Ingram's made in a while. Um, but yeah, just just mistakes. We, you know, Hawkinson drops a third down pass that is right in his hands. We have obviously the the. Uh, well, it's, it's hard to do this. So, well, we got a shot to make it a one score game again, but we would need to get the ball back. And the, the story of this game is the defense. But uh, yeah, we have. You know, we're about to we're about to go in and tie this thing up. 14 all late in the first half and they run this play I guess it hasn't been officially said yet but I guess the play was supposed to be like a fake run by Dalvin and then the throw because I guess it was going to be the Munt but Dalvin just stood there wasn't controlling the ball at all fumbles the ball Detroit takes it um, they go down the field they they try to field goal they missed it so we at least lucked out in that in that, in that one but uh um, like that was the biggest one swing play of the whole game because we would have been, you know, we had first to goal, I think at the three, we would have tied it up 14 all, and we were getting the ball to start the third quarter, and of course the third quarter was a fucking nightmare again for the Vikings, maybe not quite as bad as some games, but, um, you know, very, very disgusted by the Dalvin play, and they, they haven't run the ball at all today. Down at five. Cousins throws. End zone. Touchdown. All right. There you go. KJ's, KJ's in the end zone. Tap the feet. Well, it's not a one-score game yet. I shouldn't say it's a one-score game yet. There's another part of the reason why it's not a one-score game yet. Let's see if KJ Osborne. One. Yeah. Drags the second one. That is a touchdown. Nice. nice uh, really nice catch by uh, KJ there. And now they will... Send out the kicking unit. Yeah, here, here. We would need a two-point conversion at some point. But part of the uh, the KOC the one, thing today. I'm, I'm just going to wait. I'm going to wait. This, this would be this would be Joseph absolutely convert. classic Greg Joseph miss PAT right here because this would end the game if he misses this. 
Well, I mean, so it's a one score game with 250 to go. So if, if we got two timeouts left, but we, uh, there's absolutely no reason to think that they're going to stop. That they're going to stop Detroit here. I mean, we haven't stopped them all game. We've let them. We've let them just convert third downs over and over, but uh, yeah, the first half it was just self-inflicted bullshit. You know, we gave up, we gave up two touchdowns. Uh, the first one was after we went for a fourth down. We punted, we punted. They were offsides, and then KOC decides to go for it. But we run it. We we run a shotgun handoff on fourth and one. I, I'll never, as long as I follow football and watch football, I will never understand why coaches do this. You need to gain one yard and you run a play that requires a guy to gain five or six. And Cook was stuffed because we haven't run at all today. I don't, I don't know if we even have 20 yards rushing today. Um, 213 receiving yards for, for Justin Jefferson today. Team record. Well, at least we got that. <laughs> at least we got that from this game, which is, which is nice. But, you know, suppose if we get the ball back, which we won't. Um, you know, he can get some more. I would try the onside kick. I don't think we've tried an onside kick this year. And they got it. And I don't disagree with going for the onside kick there because the odds, that, honestly, the odds that you can recover an onside kick are probably better than the odds that you're going to get forcing three and out. Um, I, don't, I don't disagree with that at all. Um, even though the odds are very slim. But, uh, yeah, 4 405 for Kirk, 30 of 39. Huge game from Kirk, amazing game for Kirk. I mean, I, 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 you, watching this game, you cannot believe that Kirk and JJ played the way they did and we're going to lose. It's, un, it's in, unfathomable. That, that shows just how horrible this defense has been today. But, uh, you know, they gave up two big bomb touchdowns. The first, the first one was just a complete, just wide open, and it was to the guy that Detroit drafted with the draft pick when we made the trade. So everyone's all mad about that. It's like, look, this guy might turn out to be a really good player, but it had nothing to do, with, it had nothing to do with that receiver. It was just we left him wide open by 20 yards. I mean, Troy Williamson probably could have caught that. Looks like the Vikings are not going to use um, their timeouts. They're going to let it go down to the two minutes. But, uh, save their timeouts. Hopefully. You know, and then the second one, I think it was Dancer got and beat deep. Um, they both, they both happened on drives that started like in in our territory. You know, and credit to the Lions, like they went for the kill on those plays and, and they got it. Um, so they're not using the timeout here. They're letting it run, but. Uh, like, there's no reason to think they're going to stop. They're going to stop them now. Because if, if they need to run a real play, so now it'll be a two-minute warning. Third and six. If they, if they want to run a real play here, they'll run it. And you know what? They'll probably give it up. But, uh, you know, it was all just self-inflicted stuff. We, we let a drive continue for Detroit. Uh, Sullivan came up and hit Goff when he slid. Just real, just real sloppy and idiot stuff um, that you can't accept from a veteran player. Um, I don't believe they actually scored on that drive, but it didn't matter. Um, um, so yeah, it's like first half was just terrible from from a mistakes perspective. I just can't, I can't believe that play with Dalvin. And I know, like, say, you know, they kept saying, "Oh, they're getting cute." They have nothing to do with being cute. You know what? If, if that's a four-yard loss there, just fall down. Who cares? Don't fumble the ball, Dalvin. I'm sorry. Like, plays like that, and I know Dalvin's still a good player, but plays like that are why I'm not going to be too upset when Dalvin Cook is a former Viking next year. That's the thing about trades, you see. They, they don't happen on your For cap purposes, like that's, it's okay. We've seen it before. Dalvin will fumble in, 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 you know, He'll be loose with the ball. In, in spots where it's most important to just control the ball. Um, I don't need to have, the, don't need to have the, the game sound up, especially on a commercial, but this is... This game's about to be made official. Um, but... Yeah, it's just it's really frustrating first half. And, and look, Detroit, this is their season. They're playing. They're, they have to win out probably to make the playoffs. And you know they needed this game desperately, and they played like it. You know that fake punt that they ran inside. I think it was inside their forty. 
may have even been inside their 30, and I think that was the third quarter, but, you know, um, you don't do that unless you're playing, with, you're playing with a sense of desperation. And look, Detroit needed this game a lot more than we did. They played like it. We rested guys who were hurt, you know. Um, Darisaw out again. Um, um, Harrison Smith out. Bradbury out. If this game meant everything to the Vikings, I think all three of those guys probably play. But, you know, they were treating this game a little bit. Not like they don't care, not that they don't want to win, because of course they want to win. But, you know, they're thinking big picture, and so let's let's play it safe with these guys. We're in a position where we're going to clinch the division. It's just a matter of which game. Yeah, you'd, want, you'd love to do it as soon as possible, but do you push, do you push all your chips in? in a week 14 game against the Lions and then get hurt more with some of these guys and then you don't have them for the playoffs. And we're going to be in the playoffs. We're going to be hosting at least one playoff game. So I can understand not wanting to uh, to get too crazy with it. All right, so here we're coming up on the third and seven play. This, if we have any shot left, this will be the play that decides it. And there you go. What did he throw the fucking tackle for the first down? That says it. That that pretty much says it all. We deserve that embarrassment. We deserve the embarrassment of having the game clinching third down conversion being on a pass to a fucking tackle. That says it all about this defense today. Absolutely, absolutely, just disgusting. No one and no one was within five yards of him when he caught it. Just absolute embarrassment. Ed Donatel should be fired. He won't be. Like people can get people can get rid of that that fantasy right now. You're not a rookie head coach is not going to fire a veteran defensive coordinator in season. It's just not. It's just not going to happen. It should happen. This fucking guy should be gone because his unit. He, he's not making any changes to anything this whole season. It's just it's week after week. It's the same thing. He's been bailed out by some turnover, by some very timely turnovers, and by some really good offense at times. But. Ed Donatel has done nothing this entire season to help the Vikings. Nothing. He has been a detriment to this team the entire season. And he will be a detriment in the playoffs. And there's a very good chance we will get bounced in the playoffs because of this defense. Because, I'm sorry, we have a very good offense. We had a fucking incredible game from Kirk and JJ today. But that's about the only two guys. And Thielen made a couple plays, and Osborne made a couple plays, and Hawk, Hawk did make a couple plays. But you know, the passing game was very productive. Running game was garbage. I mean, I don't, we don't even think we have a chance to get the ball back now. We just got one ten. Uh, they might, we might get the ball back one more time, but they're already, they're pretty much in field goal range. Oh look, Dallas ended up coming back to win. Isn't that nice? So that, you know, I'm sure Dallas won't be shit on for a, for a, needing a fourth quarter comeback against Houston. And that's another thing that's just going to disgust me about this game is it's going to embolden the haters and the disrespecters to say, oh, see, the Vikings are frauds. Well, they're frauds on one side of the ball because their defense is terrible. They don't they don't have the defense of a 10 and, well, what is now going to be a 10 and 3 team? That's for sure. We have the offense of a 10 and 3 team. You know, we have we have a, you know, an offense that can do stuff that can be, that can be very da dangerous in a playoff setting, but... When you, when you require them to be perfect like this, you know, and then, you know, some, some play calling was just not good today. I, you know, there was a we, uh, third quarter bugaboo happened. We got in the, uh, that mode again where, what a shock, first drive of the third quarter, we went three and out. It's like clockwork. That just happens every single week. Um, yeah, we're... we're Depending on if they try a field goal here, we might get the ball back with 30 seconds left. But if they go for a field goal, make it. Obviously, that's it. And if they don't, and even if they don't, you know, we're gonna have, we're gonna need a, we would need a quite the miracle. Um, yeah, it's gonna, this is gonna take it down almost a minute. And, um, so this will be very tough. You know, there's no way this. If, if this turns into something, <laughs> if this turns into a bona fide live video, then we're really, we're really into something. Um, but uh, yeah, we, we you know, I, I believe it was the fake punt drive in the third quarter. Then we gave up a touchdown, um, wide open in the end zone. What a shock! 
Um, so it's 21-7, but then, you know, boom, our offense, you know, Kirk is like angry Kirk, and here we go, boom, 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 go down the field, uh, they get a fourth uh, fourth down conversion, uh, fourth down touchdown to Adam Thielen, great, great pass, great run after the catch, terrific, terrific play, so it's 21-13, uh, we go for two, now, I don't necessarily hate the idea of going for two because we've seen what Greg Joseph does on PETs. That would have been a primo spot for Greg Joseph and his PET. Um, so I don't I don't hate going for two there, but the play call was terrible. It was this little screen thing to Thielen in a, in a, in a crowd, and then he's tackled. and like For some reason, Thielen catches the ball and goes down. Like, go up. Maybe jump into the end zone or something. Um, and then they go down, score a touchdown, and then we, you know, we got, got into the fourth quarter, just barely into the fourth quarter, I think, as a one-score game. But then they scored. Um, all right, so this is the third and eighth play here. So, all right, yeah, this will be the tackle, and it'll be just it'll depend on if they want to go for a fourth down here to stick the dagger in, or uh, do they want to try a field goal? There's, there'll be about 20 seconds left, so um, it all depends on what they want to do here. I see, might as well just go for the fucking fourth down. Go for a field goal. Some could be, some can happen. It could be a block. Um, great game from JJ. Man. Incredible game. No time to made a couple, made a couple more. Just you know, really, really outstanding catches. Um, he, he, Kirk, Kirk in the passing game and JJ, like they, they were great. They, they, like they gave they gave everything you could want today you know we got sacked a couple times um or I mean, more than a couple times I think there's like four sacks um of course we're playing without Derisaw and Bradbury you know, you know it's frustrating it's fr like I get why they rest rested guys like you don't like this game matters but it doesn't matter that much like, in the grand scheme of things, Philadelphia was beating the shit out of the Giants. You're never going to catch that them for the one seed anyway. It's all about, can you can you stay as the two? You know, yeah, I would have liked to have stuck the dagger into the Lions and shut up the haters. But you know what? If they had won this game, it wouldn't have mattered because you would, you would just hear the same stuff. Oh, they just beat the Lions. Who cares? Um, so it's very frustrating that, that, that this happens. Okay, they are going for a field goal here. And he drilled it. And that's all you need to know about this game versus week two. Because week one, late in the game, they try a field goal. Or they could have not tried a field goal. And uh, they missed it. And that opened the door for us to come back and win. And this time they go for it. And he practically splits the uprights, and that is official. We will lose 10-3. and three. Well, Who was that? Peterson? Peterson just leaped at it. He was trying. You know, so. But they deserve this. They deserve this loss today with that defensive performance. Even even here, like, if you had stopped them on that third and six, they weren't in field goal range, you would have gotten the ball back. You would have had a shot. You would have had a shot. It would have been a long shot, but you would have been a shot. And it didn't happen. And very frustrating. But uh, but yeah, the defense just never gave him a shot. Um, you know, we got in the end zone again. Uh, it was uh, it was uh, uh, what touchdown was that? Oh, that was the that was the. Well, yeah, that was the one that happened after I record. <laughs> but it's like we were never. It, it was pretty obvious pretty early that the fourth quarter magic was not going to happen. They, you know, you know, the, the, the Ed Donatel horseshit defense just made it impossible. We never had a shot. Like, I don't know what time the possession was in this in this game, particularly in the second half, but it was it was certainly lopsided. We just did, we just didn't have a shot. We couldn't run the ball at all. You know, I get that we're down a couple linemen, but Detroit's got a terrible run defense and we couldn't run the ball at all. You know, and it was obvious very early that we couldn't run the ball, but KOC was, was hesitant to do the, you know, the whole, the whole pass to set up the run thing. You know, when you're, when you're wasting plays with just runs up the middle for nothing over and over and over, I mean, that's what happens. I'm not even, you know, 
Yeah, don't don't let don't let Kirk get a garbage interception just to hurt his stats. Um, so. But yeah, we just we didn't have a shot in the fourth quarter, and the defense didn't make it possible. Like this defense is the this is the worst defense that is ever going to be taken into a postseason by a Vikings team. We've seen worse. I think we've seen worse defenses before. Well, they, they throw one stat up there that it's the first time we've ever given up 400 yards like four games in a row. Um, you know, like we've seen some bad defenses here, but it's usually coupled with a terrible team. Like a couple of those Frazier defenses were just horrible. Um, obviously, you know the Zimmer defenses the last couple of years. Oh, there we go. Get a little, get a little uh, more statistics in there. Oh, well, that'll count as a. That's going to count as a. Uh, that's going to count probably as a fumble, I guess, and, and a turnover. But uh, so, well, Kirk gets a little more stats. <laughs> not sure how when they count those. I'm not sure how how it counts as uh, who gets the yards there. JJ gets some more yards, but uh, you know this defense though is just is 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 a train wreck, and I, we had some guys out too. I mean, I, we didn't have that many guys out compared to most weeks. You know, we have Tomlinson in there back in there now. We got Dancer back this week, um, but you know it got. It was ugly. This was ugly. This was the wor this was the worst defensive performance all year, other than the Dallas game, without question. Because we didn't do anything. They're, 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 other games we may give up yards and kind of mitigate the problem by maybe you know getting a red zone stop or getting a turnover, but that none of that happened today. Um, it was just it was just a train wreck. In the second half, they gave them no sh gave us no shot. It's like yeah, the, there were some there were some play calling things on offense, and obviously that fumble is just enormous. The, the whole game plays out differently if it's 14-14 there, but you know that defense just gave us no shot. And the, 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 we have a defense with a lot of veteran players. These guys are these guys are smart players. They've been in the league in some cases for many years. They know they know that this is just wrong. That this is a, a scheme and, a, and an approach that is just doomed to failure. And I don't know what they can do. I mean, you could years ago we had a, a couple of defensive backs have basically an open revolt in the middle of the game against Zimmer. I suppose we could do that. I mean, I don't know what I don't know what you can do because we're we're 13 games into this and this defense just does not change. They don't change their approach at all. Um, and I thought actually at the beginning of the game we were getting a little bit of pressure but they just went away from it they went away from even trying they started rushing four again and we're, we weren't getting any pressure on them rushing just four guys and we never do and I don't I don't understand how Donatello hasn't figured this out and maybe he doesn't care maybe he's just one of these old coaches who's just on a retirement gig we've seen that in this town in, in many sports before where a, a veteran older coach takes a job here and is just a it's just a retirement gig for him and he doesn't really care and maybe donatel just doesn't fucking care about what what what's going on here maybe he doesn't maybe he just doesn't it's possible because it, 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 it's inexplicable how there's just no adjusting to anything week after week after week it doesn't even matter who's out there that's why like, you know people are like oh my god harrison smith's out we're in trouble like we would have probably given up 34 points today if harrison smith was in there you know maybe maybe smith would have given coverage on that first touchdown or something. I don't know. But, you know, it, would, it, it wouldn't have mattered. It's, it's, it's the scheme. It's, it has nothing to do with the personnel. Like, we have we have these great pass rushers in Daniel Hunter and Zadarius Smith, and Ed Donatel has turned them into garbage. He, he's, he's neutralized them better than any opposing coach could. It's unbelievable. Because they, they, they don't try. They do not try to pressure the quarterback most of the time. They do not try to adjust their coverage uh, their coverage scheme blitzes I don't did, did we blitz one time in this entire game I don't even know that we did I mean it was it was it's as bad a defensive performance as we've seen and you know the Dallas game was one thing you know because that got got kind of got one side and not a hand I mean you know and Dallas is a better team than Detroit but you know, you know you can make a case that this was the worst game all year by the defense because they they, they, they didn't do anything to help they didn't do anything. Everything, everything Detroit did was so easy. This whole game, and we've seen it in other games. Like 
they make it so easy. Last week they're make they're letting Mike White complete open passes over the middle of the field over and over and over with no adjustment. You know, we shut it down in the red zone. You know, they were scoring on us before they were even in the red zone some of the times today. So, uh, you know, and we and we waste because of this. We we waste a, you know a career a franchise record best game from Justin Jefferson and a, and, a, and one of Kirk Cousins' best games. Like Kirk was standing in the pocket, like he wasn't getting very good pass protection. He got what, like four sacks, but he's he's in there. He's ga he's a gamer. He's he's tough. He's throwing darts all over the fucking field. And it didn't matter in the end because our defense never gave us a shot. And that's that, that's one of the that's the big difference with fourth quarter today versus some of these other ones is we've had horrible defensive performances. Quarters one, two, three in the fourth quarter, stuff changes. Like I, you know, and we've seen it. We've seen it in you know, in the course, especially like, like especially a couple weeks ago in that New England game. They don't pressure at all for three quarters. And in the fourth quarter, they're, they're pressuring like crazy because they're trying. And there was just no, there was no change today. And maybe that, maybe they just, from, from the, you know, the position they're in, and they've earned the being in this position where they can, you know, not, not, they, it's not like they weren't trying. Like they, it's not like the KOC and the team went to Detroit like, we don't care if we win. We don't want to win. It's like this game doesn't mean anything. It's not. It's like a fort, like a preseason game. No, they weren't. I don't think they were treating it that way at all. But, um, you know, you know, even even some of the stuff that we were doing play calling today, it's like it's almost like KFC trying stuff out. Like, man, hey, let me let me try this. Let me try this play. Let me try this play at the goal line. Like, yeah. like this loss doesn't hurt us that much. It could hurt us for the for the two seed. It doesn't hurt us as far as the one seed. The one seed is gone. This this video here will be the last time I mention the Vikings and the one seed as anything because now you are because Philly went on blew them out, blew out the Giants. So you're you're down three games with four to go. That's over. The Eagles will be the one seed. It's as close to official as it could be. They could probably even clinch that next week. Um, but uh, you know, it's all about you know. Do we hold on for the two? And we will win the division. I'm sure there's Vikings fans who are going to be like, "Oh my God, we're gonna we're not even going to win the division now." Yes, we are going to win the division. We can come home next Saturday, play the Colts, clinch the division. <laughs> we'll be okay. Okay, on that on that end. Um, and this show the standings in the conference right now. I hate doing this. We kind of got we kinda, it would kind of help us if Tampa Bay one day beat the 49ers <laughs> I hate root I hate that I hate rooting for, for anything involving Tom Brady but it actually would help us if they won today because that would drop put uh, loss number five on the 49ers so we would stay two up with four to go um, but yeah I mean you know, and I hate I just fucking hate I'm gonna just ignore I mean I, I'm gonna ignore as much as I can about any discourse about the Vikings from a national perspective this week because it's all gonna be about the frauds. Oh, they're no good. You know, you know. Like I said, their defense is their defense is no good. They, this defense, you know, it, whatever this team can do in the in the postseason, it's it's all gonna be on the offense. How, how, you know, how far can Kirk and JJ and Thielen and maybe if we get a competent game from the running game. Um, how far can this offense carry this team? And I don't know. Yeah. Can it, is it, is it going to carry us to a one and done or is it going to carry us to an NFC championship game or what? I don't know. I, I know the only team that I've ever seen from the Vikings that has had a worse defense than this going, uh, that's going to be a postseason team. And they are going to be a postseason team is 2000. And that ended with 41 donut. <laughs> and I could see that happening. Maybe not the donut part, but I could see us going, you know, you know, you know, now we would have to win two games to get to an NFC Championship game. In 2000, we just had to beat the Saints, kind of a kind of a nothing Saints team, um, in the playoffs to get to an NFC Championship game. We would have to win two. In this case, can we win two playoff games to get to an NFC Championship game? And which would probably be, which would maybe be in Philadelphia. And obviously, we would not beat Philadelphia <laughs> playing this kind of defense. We would have no shot. I don't, I don't, the offense could score a touchdown every series and still lose. It could be like that. You know Buffalo, Kansas City game last year in the playoffs, but you know they've got they're they're in a position where they can do things like rest starters in a game in a division road game, and you know, you can you can 
or not that they don't want to win, but focus on the main prize. Like the worst case scenario is you're going to fall to the three, and I don't know that I don't know that you're even going to fall to the three because now the 49ers are going to be playing with a third string quarterback for the rest of the, for the rest of the season. Um, like, but there's there's certainly reason to be alarmed with this defense, and I don't think I don't think this is breaking news. Like the de- this Vikings defense being kind of crap, just just a sieve. I don't think this is breaking news to anybody who's watched the Vikings this year, because we have we have you know we're 13 games in. How many good defensive games have we really played? Like Green Bay Week One, and I would still give them that Washington game because one of the touchdowns was with the fucking ref running into our guy, you know. But every other game, it's been some variation of we just let every quarterback look great. We can't, we can't tackle. We can't count, can't cover. We don't pressure a quarterback. It's been kind of just the same thing week after week after week. Um, and it's really frustrating that nothing seems to change because I don't know. I, I don't know the inner workings over at uh, TCO. Is it is it just O'Connell's kind of a is he kind of a passive guy when it comes to, you know, you know the, the defensive side of the ball? Defensive side of the ball is, you know, like Zimmer always got, you know, ripped for not caring about offense. I don't think, I don't think KOC doesn't care about his defense, but is it just like, hey, this guy's, this, this Ed Donatelli, he's got literally decades more experience than I do. I'm not going to go, you know, into his office and start, you know, critiquing him and telling him what's what and telling him what I want to do, but... Like, the personnel on this defense is better than what we're seeing, and there just doesn't seem to be there doesn't seem to be a lot of uh, incentive or interest in changing anything, and it's going to bite them. It's going to bite them in the playoffs. Like I think I think this offense can carry this team in the playoffs if they just get a little bit of confidence from the defense. If we get just a little bit of confidence from the defense, and we might, we legitimately might be the worst defense in the NFL now based on yardage. I believe we were 31st coming into the day. I don't know if, I don't know if what other games would, would impact that, but we might literally be the worst defense by yardage in the NFL. And we might even be one of the worst in, in terms of scoring. Like, teams that have defenses like that do not win Super Bowls. It has never happened before where a, a defense this bad has won a Super Bowl. Um... I mean, basically, you, can, you almost never see a team even even get to a Super Bowl with a really, really, really bad defense. You know, and stuff. Something's gonna have to change because look, you're gonna you're gonna win the division. You still have a real good shot to win the two seed, especially if the 49ers lose today, um, which is the next game coming up here. Um, but stuff's got to change on this defense. It, it's it's not sustainable. Like the offense, you can count on the offense. The offense has been pretty good. The offense was good today, even with a couple a couple of mistakes that cost us points. Um, but uh, you know, it's just it's just not sustain. This defense is just not sustainable, and it is, it is so far and away the weak link of this of this Vikings team, and it is going to kill us. And. I would like to at least see some some acknowledgement from Ed Donatel that he understands this. And to this point, you know, he, I know he does a press conference, I guess, every week. To this point, I've seen nothing other than him bragging about how yardage doesn't matter and only points matter. Well, guess what? You give up a lot of yards, you're going to give up a lot of points, and they're giving up a lot of points. You can't count on stopping teams in the red zone all the time or, or getting an opportune turnover. And you get in spots like this one today where your offense, yeah, your offense was not 100% perfect, but you cannot ask that of an offense week after week after week. Like, this uh, this offense has already been bailing out this this, this damn defense. Um, yeah, it just, it's not sustainable, and I just, I hope that whether it's, whether it's KOC, you know, taking more of a, of a, of a, position of control over the defense or, you know, again, there's zero chance. I'm sure there's a lot of people saying fire Donatel. It'll never happen. You will never see a rookie head coach fire a veteran uh, defensive coordinator in the middle of a season, especially a winning season. You're just ne- you're just not going to see it. It's a, it's a fantasy. After the season, maybe. Like, I could see them actually making a change there after the season. But, you know, it's, it's just, it's just, it's grotesque watching this shit. Oops, and there we go again. 
I had a feeling that was going to happen. Well, I'm almost done anyway. Um, but yeah, very, very disappointed that uh, that this was allowed to happen today because it didn't have to happen. This could this could have been. You know, imagine if, if imagine if Kirk and JJ had put up these numbers and win to clinch us a division. Like that would have been great. That would have been amazing. But it didn't happen because one side of the ball just did not attempt to, to win this game today. It was it was it was as as grotesque a, di- a display of a defense in a, in a in a winnable game. Like the Dallas game was not winnable because the offense was, was horrible in that game. So that was not that was not a winnable game. You know, this was not, this was a winnable game if the defense even gives us a fucking shot in that second half. But it didn't happen. And so we are 10 and 3. We did not clinch. Second straight week, we had a chance to clinch, didn't clinch. Obviously, we needed help last week to clinch, didn't get it. You know, this week we just needed to do our part to clinch, and we didn't do it. And back at it next Saturday. We get the Colts coming in here. I believe the Colts are on a bye this week, so they'll be rested for whatever that's worth. Um, but it's like now we need to just, you know. Get, get in there, get this thing clinched up, because if something happens and we lose to the Colts, then this is going to start to be like, what, you know, it's going to start to look like a collapse. You know, and it's stupid to call it a collapse, because, I mean, for God's sakes, we've lost one game, we've, we've, we've lost two of our last four, okay, but our defense is just not, is, is not good, and, and if, if the, if the, if the offense isn't perfect, it's, 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 it's feeling like if the offense is off at all, we have no chance. You know, and our offense was very good the last couple weeks against very good defenses. You know, you know, for the most part, we kind of we kind of worked great against against the Jets, but you know, we put up 27 points on a team that rarely gives up that many. But you know, just a couple little things today: a drop here, a bad play call here on a fourth down, a, 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 a fumble inside the five. Like you fumble inside the five and turn the ball over and get zero, that teams don't win when they do that. You give up a fake punt, teams don't win. Like you know, it's very disappointing. You know, I thought I thought there was certainly a chance that they would lose this game. I coming in, I thought, okay, this is the toughest game left on their schedule. You know, and again, Detroit was playing for their season. They're playing for their season every week now. Um, they can't afford to lose another game. You know, and they played like it, and they and they made calls like it. You know, even that grotesque conversion there at the end to the fucking tackle. You know, like they're they're they were playing for the win. Credit to them. They 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 deserve the win. I think I think I think the Vikings gave this game away largely in the first half, but they also gave it away in the second half by just making no adjustments on defense, which disgusts me. And I hate this defense, and I hate Ed Donatello, and I cannot wait until he is gone. Because whatever this team can do this year in the postseason, whatever they do, it's less than what they could do with a with a better defensive coordinator or play caller. Because he's just he's he's, he's derelict of duty. He's just he's just terrible, and he doesn't seem to want to change because we're 13 games in and nothing has changed. It might change a drive here or a drive there, but you can't count on just an opportune turnover every week or to, to have your, your defense in the red zone be lights out be lights out a whole bunch of times. Like you have you have to show up for four quarters and you have to attempt to pressure a quarterback because Jared Goff is still a pretty solid quarterback and we've let quarterbacks worse than Jared Goff eat us alive this year. And we're gonna face somebody in the playoffs who's better who's better than Jared Goff. Hell we might even face Jared Goff that they'll you know, if Detroit does get in, there's a decent chance we're playing them a third time in uh in the middle of January at U.S. Bank Stadium. And if we play defense like we did in that one, that would be a really humiliating end to this, to what has been a very good season, to, to let a, a Detroit Lions team come in here and beat us in the playoffs. Or any team, you know, any seven seed come in here and beat us. But we can't we can't ask perfection of an offense. We can't ask perfection. Just, just, you know, this offense can take us a long way, especially if we get you know we have, we have Darisaw back in there and and Bradbury and you know if we keep keep our health going. You know this offense can take this team a long way, but you know it's like you know it's like trying to you know to 
drive a, you know, drive a race with a flat tire. Like, <laughs> this going to be this one thing holding us back, and that's that defense. And I say again, I just don't, I don't know why there seems to be zero interest from Ed Dontel to change up anything other than maybe he just doesn't fucking care. Maybe this is just his retirement gig. Like we've seen before, like North Turner was here on a retirement gig. You know? And, you know, in other sports, Tubby Smith was here on a retirement gig. He doesn't fucking care. Like, you know, we just, we've just we seen this in other sports. It's like, these, these veteran coaches, they come in here and it's like, oh, we got this big name, Rick Adelman. <laughs> There's another one. Like, we get these guys in there, you know, they're, just, they're on a retirement gig. They don't, they don't really care. And they're not going to change because they think they know everything. Well, Ed Donatel doesn't, apparently doesn't know shit. I, don't, I guess I don't know that much about Ed, Ed Donatel's history in, in terms of what six, kind of success he's had in, in terms of winning in playoffs. But he's, he's absolutely holding this team back with, with his grotesque scheme and grotesque defensive play calling. And I hope it changes because, um, God, I've been going for 40 minutes. Um, I'm almost done. <laughs> if you actually watch this whole thing... You know, I don't know what I don't know what's wrong with you, but uh, you know, very disappointing day because this was this we could have won it, and and look, it'll be it'll be it'll win that next Saturday, clinch at home. That's going to feel really great too. I, to, you know, big picture, this game doesn't hurt us that much as as just a one game thing, but you know, all it does is is erase the one seed chances that's gone. But you know, they've got they've got four games left. Because you can't be fixing, trying to fix shit in the playoffs. You have to fix it now. You have to fix these things now before you get in the playoffs and are getting, you know, destroyed maybe by the Detroit Lions again or by, you know, Washington or Seattle or whoever ends up coming in here. You know, you got you got to fix this stuff now. And we're 13 weeks in and they've done nothing to fix it. And it's been a problem. It's been a Other than week one, I don't know what that and I guess the Washington game, but I don't know what the hell I, I don't know what happened with week one versus now. And I know Green Bay was off to a, a bad start this year on offense, but I don't I don't know what I don't know what changed. It's like we started getting lit up week two by the Eagles and nothing has changed. We just we 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 just don't compete. We just don't compete on defense. It's, it's just passive. It's just passive I don't even know if you can call it prevent defense. It's just passive garbage all the time. And we're going to be in trouble in the playoffs if this continues because Kirk's, Kirk is damn good. JJ is unbelievable. We got a lot of other weapons. You know, the run game will—I don't think will ever be this this inept again. I hope not. Um, you know, like we can put up points on just about anybody. We did. We did. We put up a lot of points on on really good defenses the last couple games. But you can't ask for for perfection. On either side of the ball, I'm not asking for the defense to be perfect. I'm not asking for this de defense to suddenly become the 2,000 Ravens, but just fucking compete a little bit. You know, some, like we've done in some of these fourth quarters, like show up, pressure a quarterback once in a while, cover a receiver. The number of third and like six plus today that we gave up is just gross, and it seems to be deliberate. And I don't understand it, but I'm I'm getting into the re into the point of the, of the video where I'm just repeating myself big picture. It sucks that we lost today. It sucks that it's going to embolden all the disrespect and haters. Um, but we're still in a good, really good spot. We can come home and clinch. And we, we, we're, it's nice that we're in this spot where we can work on this stuff into the playoffs, but there has to be a desire to work on it. And I just don't know if there's a desire on Ed Dantel's part to work on anything because I just don't know if he fucking cares. These, these players have to care. There's, there, there's no way guys like you know, he didn't play today, but Harrison Smith or Patrick Peterson or Eric Kendricks, Dean Hunter. These these guys are all. Most of our defense is a veteran defense. There's there's no way they do not see this, and do not do, do not see this what what is being done with this personnel and this passive just nothing defensive approach. There's no way they're okay with this, and I don't know what they can do other than open revolt. But I don't see that happening, or or firing a defensive coordinator. And I don't see that happening. So I hope something changes. You know, positive. We're coming home for for the Colts and then the Giants for the last two home games. Um, we will be able to clinch at home. I mean, we can cl we can clinch right away. First game on a Saturday triple header. We can come home, clinch, and then kind of uh, 
just at least check that one box off and then we'll work on everything else. But man, Ed Donatel, I do not like you, man. I want you gone from this team. Um, and I hate that, that whatever this team could be this season, you know, as far as a playoff situation is going to be lesser because you are a passive, uncaring <laughs> jackass.